Hello everybody. So this is a little bit of a help on 14.1.5 um, just because there are a lot of parts to this problem and it can certainly get confusing <laughs> to know exactly what's uh, what's happening here. You really have to make sure that you know your symbols and you have to know what they mean. Um, so first of all, when you go into your stat crunch uh, or you go into uh, your problem set, you're going to have a little different bit different numbers than mine. Um, so you'll just have to run your own test and get all your own values, but this will show you exactly where to find those values. Um, so first of all, beta naught, which is this little zero, right? We call that beta naught and beta sub one. Um, those are your slope and your y-intercept, okay? So um, if ever you're not sure exactly what those mean, it's a great thing to go to is question help. And if you click view an example, it'll tell you kind of what you're looking for here. So um, beta naught is the estimate of the y-intercept and beta one is the estimate of the slope, right? So beta naught, y-intercept, beta one, slope, okay? So when we do our values here in StatCrunch, um, you'll know exactly which one goes where and what they mean, okay? Um, so to get this into StatCrunch, you're gonna press this little button here and click open in StatCrunch and it'll bring your data right over to StatCrunch for you, which is really helpful. Now we're doing a linear regression and we're going to find beta naught and beta one. And to do that, you press stat and then regression and then simple linear. Okay. Now I already know that this problem is going to also ask me for a hypothesis test for the slope. Um, so one of the reasons we do a hypothesis test for slope is to see if this has actually a linear relationship. Um, if the slope were zero, then it wouldn't be a linear relationship. Uh, if the slope is something other than zero, then it is a linear relationship. So this is the one that we're actually going to be looking for uh, later on. And it'll also have things like our standard error and stuff like that. So first we have to choose our variables. Um, select your variable, they're both labeled X and Y, which is nice, so you just need to make sure that you choose it. And then everything's all set up for you, you just click compute. So now that we have um, this value here, um, let me just make this a little bit bigger so we can see everything. Okay, so what we have here is our slope and our intercept. So remember what we talked about over here, right? Beta naught is going to be your intercept and beta one is gonna be your slope. I think that's how they marked it, correct? Let's just check. Yes, beta naught, y-intercept, beta one, slope, okay? Um, so you just have to remember that before you plug things in. So beta naught, our intercept, our estimate here for my data is negative 0.7558, and they want us to round to three decimal places. So I'll make that negative 0.756. So I'll put in negative 0.756, and then the estimate for my slope is 1.32. Three, we'll call it because there's a five next to it. So 1.733. So 1.733. Okay, so that's where you find those answers. Now to compute the standard error for the point estimate for sigma, the way where you find that, again, you don't have to run any other test. It is right here, right? Estimate of standard error, standard deviation. And they want us to round to four decimal places. So when I go back here, it's going to be one point. 3626. So 1.3626. 3626. Enter. Okay. Next, you have to, um, assuming that the residuals are normally distributed, determine S of B1. Now, again, B1 is your slope, right? Beta 1. And S is the symbol for standard deviation. So when you go back to this table, okay, here's your slope. That was beta 1. Your standard deviation, your standard error, right? should be this value right here. So 0.328, I think they wanted us to run to three decimal places. Yes, so let's see, 0.328, let's make sure that works out nicely. And there we go. And then see here we had to run the hypothesis test, which we already had set up for beta one, which is the slope. Um, so using the p-value approach, we need to find the p-value, which should already be here because we ran that, um, that value. So here's your slope, follow it across. The p-value is 0 0.0133. So let's see, 0 0.013, they just want three decimal places, 0 0.013. Okay, and um, the little thing to remember how to reject or not reject the null hypothesis, if the p is low, the null must go. So in this case, um, my alpha value was 0 0.05, and p is less than that, it's 0 0.013. So if you compare those decimal places, alpha is larger. So the P is low, we reject H naught, we reject the null, okay? Um, so the only thing you have to be um, worried about is the wording of these values. So we are going to be rejecting H naught, right? So it's either B or D. And um, 
there is sufficient evidence to conclude that a linear eight relationship exists. So remember what H naught was. H naught, let me just go back here. Where did it go? Let me just go back to options. I want to show you. So remember, H naught is that the intercept or the slope, depending on which one you're looking at, we're looking at slope, is zero. And if the slope is zero, then it's not linear, right? But if the slope is not zero, then it is linear. So if we go back here, right? <clears throat> reject, there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the linear relationship exists between X and Y. Um, do not reject, uh, I'm sorry, reject, there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that a linear relationship exists between um, X and Y, we would pick B. And that should work, because we think that a linear relationship exists because it is not zero. We rejected that null hypothesis. Um, so hopefully that helps. I know it's a lot of steps here, but really once you run that one test, Everything is there, you just need to know where to find it. So let me know if you have any more questions on that.